Hello, good morning, good afternoon. This is Benjamin from Eclipse. Uh, we are uh, back with our virtual IoT meetup. Uh, I think we're uh, getting good at making those very uh, regular now. Today we're talking about uh, Java and well, uh, Java for embedded and Java for IoT with uh, Kevin from uh, from Agile Systems. So I won't spoil his introduction and he will, he will be able to, to introduce himself very shortly. Just a quick reminder that if you have any questions anytime, just Tweet them using virtual IoT hashtag, or just use the um, uh, Google Plus uh, comments system, or you comment on meetup.com, whatever floats your boat. And uh, yeah, we really want to make those sessions very interactive. Interactive, so please let us know uh, your feedback. And Kevin, welcome, and I'd let you uh, do your presentation. Now. Great, thank you, Benjamin. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Kevin. Glad to be here. Uh, I'm with the Azul system. Um, so we're based in uh, sunny California, here in Silicon Valley. Um, today I want to share uh, something about Zulu and Zulu Embedded, um, why we decided to build one, and what it's about, and what type of platform it supports. We'll talk about some of the use cases, um, as well as uh, actually running Zulu Embedded on the uh, Intel, Edison, and Galileo. Uh, we'll go through quick tutorials on how to set it up, install Zulu, and maybe we could even kind of go through how we actually could run Cura, deploy sample applications, and get you uh, up and going. And hopefully at the end of the day, um, have you guys excited about this, and try it out yourself, and share some of the cool things you guys are going to be building. OK? So I'm going to start the slide here, just one second. See if I could get this thing figured out. Okay, there we go. Okay. Full screen mode. Perfect. There we go. Okay, cool. So um before we get started, just a little background about um, who we are. Um, so Ozil Systems, um, we've been around since about 2002 uh, here in Silicon Valley. Um, we're actually the only uh, company in industry exclusively focused on Java and JVM. Uh, we build uh, fully supported, standards compliant Java runtime uh, that can be used in many industries. And we have uh, presence or seat on the table at JCP Executive Committee. Um, our CTO, Gil Tene, is actively involved with the JCP and direction of the Java as a whole. And we actually have a, you know, quite a number of customers um, who's looking to get some professional support on Java. Having said that, I want to introduce you what Zulu is. Um, I don't know if you guys have been to Java 1, but we've been there. Uh, we still uh, sort of are cousins of uh, Duke, if you will. Uh, Zulu is really you know, OpenJDK Java. Uh, when I say OpenJDK Java, it's fully certified, uh, OpenJDK. We are an official licensee of uh, Java TCK from Oracle. And we test and certify all our Java uh, to make sure that is 100% compliant and, and meets the specification. And we have uh, pretty much every version um, that we support. Uh, 6, 7, and 8. And of course, we'll be supporting Java 9 when it comes out. And it's really a, a drop-in replacement for uh, current Oracle JDK or the Open JDK. And the, the way we actually uh, carry on our business is by providing a professional support. Um, so for those companies that are looking for an economical way to support uh, their Java for their enterprises, that's what we do. And we also provide some uh, capabilities for the uh, enterprise to get premium support through our Zulu Enterprise Premium Offering. Now, in terms of the supported platforms for, for our Zulu and Zulu Embedded, uh, we pretty much uh, support uh, every flavors or almost all flavors of Linux. Um, for the uh, Internet of Things and IoT, uh, we've been working with Yocto Linux um, as well as recently Windows 10 IoT Core. And for the service and desktop, um, pretty much every major flavors, um, as well as the uh, supporting Dockers and the cloud, 
uh, at Microsoft Azure as well as Amazon AWS and a few others. Now, I want to kind of share um, some background on why we actually embarked on uh, providing Zool Embedded. Um, if you've been using Java, especially in Java in the embedded spaces, um, uh, some of you may know that uh, there is a, a huge uh, restrictions or barrier uh, to use Java commercially. So if you're a maker uh, creating your own Java or IoT applications and decides to go to commercial, you'll quickly realize uh, there's a big brother <coughs> asking you to uh, pay a license fee. So unlike the general purpose computing uh, for desktop, laptop, and servers, uh, you're free to use Java and JDK. That's not the case for embedded or, or dedicated use for Java. Uh, every time you want to embed Java on a dedicated purposes or embedded devices, um, you're liable to pay a license fee based on the uh, binary code license from Oracle. And it is very, it gets very expensive. And uh, for you to be able to actually distribute Java, <clears throat> you have to follow the restriction that's imposed on you. So what, what actually happened, uh, at least from my perspective, is that the, the growth of Java, especially in the space of embedded IoT, has been pretty uh, very much hindered, if you will. And I believe that by having <clears throat> or removing these restrictions, it would allow Java to be more uh, prevalent and have developers be able to use Java more so than ever before and really grow this whole IoT space uh, that's based on Java that everyone likes to use. And of course, the standard Java that's out there for desktop and, and servers really doesn't fit in the embedded environment. So that's another factor. And of course, for the overall uh, Java community, I think having a alternative Java platform for embedded in IoT is a good thing. So let's jump right into what Zool Embedded actually does here. Um, again, it is uh, based on 100% open source. <coughs> it is certified build of OpenJDK. Um, again, being uh, embedded in IoT focus, it is customizable. Um, we could do 32 or 64 bit, uh, supports uh, major operating platforms, um, being a Java platform for embedded, where it goes into uh, constrained environments, <clears throat> many cases it will be uh, headless without having the UI. And with Java 8, um, we're able to provide uh, even smaller form factor of runtime uh, using compact profiles. And of course, we'll be supporting Java 9 when the full modularity comes out, uh, hopefully within the next uh, year or two. And believe it or not, <clears throat> Zool Embedded is already being used in the field um, by many folks. Um, there's over about 2 million devices already running Zool Embedded. And in terms of use cases, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we see a lot of use cases around uh, dedicated appliances, <clears throat> routers, uh, gateways, as well as the <clears throat> uh, multifunction printers, kiosk, and so on. And, and most of all, we see uh, growing uh, uses in the gateways and routers uh, as gateways are becoming really critical to the IoT. Um, it not only act as a concentrators or aggregation point, uh, they provide uh, redundancy where they can uh, really react locally. Uh, in, 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 for example, in the case where, where the network is down uh, and adding additional processing capabilities locally and providing some additional security layers, whereby um, really reducing um, latencies and minimizing some of the traffic associated with the, uh, the devices communicating back to the backend infrastructure. So in this slide kind of shows uh, sort of typical use cases. Um, where we see Java being used uh, is more in the industrial uh, areas rather than the consumer, uh, obviously. Um, unfortunately, you know, Android has sort of the won the battle, if you will, on the consumer side a couple of years ago. However, we see a lot of the industry verticals still uh, using Java in their environments, especially in the back end, and hence <clears throat> having Java running on the gateways is, is super important. So in this case, we're illustrating uh, one of the demo cases we've built, <clears throat> working with one of our partner, OCI Web, 
where um, a typical, let's say, a, a oil and gas company are monitoring uh, gas pumps across the country. And Java uh, running in, in the gateway devices is collecting uh, data from the sensors and it's feeding back to the back end, where it could be uh, obviously processed in real time uh, through the streaming or in batch mode uh, using a dupe or some other uh, file system in the back end. And then, of course, presenting the, uh, the real time data or analytics, if you will, uh, through some sort of UI. And we see a lot of similar type of use cases across different verticals. Um, again, uh, Java is being used not only in the back end, but of course, given the fact that um, it is uh, pretty much written in, in different areas, and in this case, uh, gateways and other sensor type of devices can really utilize the uh, same functionality that can be uh, deployed in different use cases. By the way, um, I like to make this sort of session more interactive, so feel free to uh, uh, send any questions, ask questions in the middle. Um, hopefully, that'll be more fun that way. OK. So having said that, um, let's jump right into um, sort of the meat of the presentation where we'll be actually uh, getting up and running uh, Zulu Embedded on Intel, Edison, and Galileo. Um, let me just show you. Um, I think some of you actually may have probably played around with this already. Um, show you what it actually looks like. If I could figure out how to screen back to the desktop here. Um, okay. Can you get your back? Your back. My back. Okay. Great. All right. So this is the um, Edison board. Um, it's a. Uh, it's a little bigger than your thumb. Um, it's actually sitting on a uh, uh, extension block, um, but the chip itself uh, it's pretty tiny, um, but it's pretty powerful. Um, it's got a dual core atom processor. Um, I think it's a 500 uh, megahertz processor with uh, one gig of RAM, and uh, it's, it's also got built-in four gig of, of flash memory. So um, and, and also, it's got the built-in Wi-Fi. So it's a pretty powerful little uh, gadget here. Um, and you could actually do quite a lot of things with it. And the other device that we have here is the sort of the, the little cousin. Um, actually, it's not so little. Uh, it's sitting on the uh, uh, bigger boards here. It's the uh, Galileo boards. And this one is, is also running 32-bit processor, but a little bit less powerful. Um, it's got Quark 32-bit. Uh, chip. Uh, I think it's running 400 megahertz. It's got um, 256 mega memory, I believe, as well as 8 mega flash. But it's got the um, the SD card, external XD card, that you could actually uh, plug in here. Um, so you could actually have a uh, flash memory, external flash memory, up to 32 gigabyte. So you could do quite a bit of fun things with this as well. So um, we'll kind of go over you know, how to sort of get this going uh, using Zulu Embedded. OK. So let me just switch back to the screen mode here. There we go. OK. So getting the uh, Intel going. So basically what you need is the Intel Edison itself. And uh, you might want to get one of the breakout boards. Um, there's two flavors out there. The one I got is the one on the right, the red one from SparkFun. Um, it allows you to actually connect the console through the mini USB cable and also allow you to uh, connect additional extension boards to hook up the, uh, the pins if you want to actually play around with the uh, general purpose I.O. and flashing LEDs and so on. You can do that as well. Um, and then other things you need, again, is the, uh, the USB cable itself, micro USB, and just the uh, PC with terminal or, or, or putty if you're, using, uh, if you're a Windows user. So in my case, I'm using my Mac. So I'll be using a uh, Mac terminal. Um, and getting the Intel uh, set up um, requires you to actually update the firmware, um, which includes the actual OS. Um, the 
Intel team has done a pretty decent job uh, within the last month or so revamping their uh, Getting Started Guide on, on their website for Intel Edison and Galileo. Um, uh, if you were playing around with these Intel Edison or Galileo uh, maybe two months back, uh, you may have some trouble finding the right information because it wasn't as a, you know, well organized, if you will, but now I think they've gotten a lot better. Um, but most of the information to actually set up the Edison board itself, you could find it on Intel's website. Um, and once you have that, um, you basically need to download the uh, latest firmware and hook up the cable and do some configuration, and off you go. So one of the first things you need to do is download the flashing tool. Um, let me just show you what that tool actually looks like. Um, let's go here. So I'm just firing up the uh, flashing tool here, just one second. So hopefully you can see my desktop here. Um, yep. OK, great. So basically, you download this flashing tool and download the firmware from Intel and locate the uh, firmware on your desktop. And then click Go. And if you have connected your Edison board properly, uh, you would flash the uh, firmware on the Intel Edison with the latest uh, Yachtel Linux. And you're good to go. Back in the full screen mode. There we go. OK. Um, and then um, Intel actually have uh, decided to provide, uh, make life easier for people, uh, for those people who don't want to actually uh, mess around with individually downloading the flashing tool and image. They have uh, created this one integrated installer. I personally haven't tried it, but um, if you want to try it, um, that's another option there. And then once you have that connected, then um, it's basically uh, showtime where you just uh, start firing up your terminal windows or, or putty and connect directly to the Edison and see if you could actually run something. So in this case, I'm just going to actually show you what it actually looks like. So I'll open up my terminal window. Okay, so okay, so let me see where the uh, Edison is located. Okay, I think I need to just reboot my Edison real quick. Apologize. OK, so now I basically connected my micro USB to the Edison board. And see if I could actually recognize it. There we go. It's booting up. So at this point, the image doesn't have any Java nor Zulu whatsoever, right? Theoretically correct, yes, correct. If you, were, uh, if you have just flashed with the latest Yachtel image, correct, you would not have any Java uh, installed on it, um, but to save time, I've actually installed the Zulu embedded. <laughs> so I'll show you. Okay. So we're logged into the Edison. Um, so what I've done here is pretty simple. So in order for you to run Zulu embedded, is simply just go to um, the Zulu website, um, zulu.com slash Zulu embedded and you download the Intel Edison binary. Now, one thing I just want to make you guys aware is uh, we're actually in the process of switching over to a new website. Uh, uh, we're, we've, been, we've been modernizing our uh, website throughout. So um, the, the page might not be there. Uh, you may be still pointed to the, our old website where it would ask you to uh, send an email. Uh, if you see that, then feel free to you know, just send an email asking for the download, or at the end, at, or you could send me an email directly. I'll show you, I'll give you my email address at the end of the session, and we'll, we'll point you to the place where you could actually get the download. But if you happen to get to the new website, 
then you should have a link where you could actually download the binary directly. So you, you basically download that binary, and then all you have to do is um, FTP in or um, secure copy file directly to Edison um, from your terminal window. And it's pretty simple to install it. It's, it's a matter of just extracting it to the directory um, and setting the uh, uh, Java home environment variable and path. And then link, creating a soft link to Java. And that's all you need to do. And for, for some of you who wants to sort of uh, make it global, then you obviously uh, edit the uh, profile file to make sure it's pointing to the right path. And um, that's pretty much it. So assuming you did that, uh, you've downloaded the uh, Azul embedded uh, from azul.com. Uh, you copy it or FTP into the Edison. Um, you set the variable. Then what you should see is the embedded being installed on in your environment. So in here, you could see that is OpenJDK Java SE on time, Zulu. In this case, I've installed the uh, seven update 76 version. It's a headless uh, Java, and where you could actually on a sample application. So let's see what I did here. I think I have a sample hello world somewhere. So, so, so I created a little mini hello world, if you will, where it basically prints out um, hello IoT world. So if you want to run it, Go so, dual embedded is running on that Edison. So the other thing that you guys want to actually try out, if you are looking to actually build um, or, or use Edison as a, a gateway type of devices, then obviously you want to install Cura. So Benjamin, I think, have gone uh, through a couple of sessions on uh, using Eclipse Cura. But you could actually run Cura on here on top of Zool Embedded. So again, um, very simple. Um, in order to install Cura on Edison on top of Zool Embedded is obviously uh, installing the Cura. So first, you go through the, uh, the traditional process of having your Cura development workspace set up on your desktop. So that you could get that from the Cura Eclipse Cura website. You download it. Once you download the Cura for Intel Edison, um, very similar to what we did with Zulu Embedded, you basically FTP or secure copy into Edison. And then that's all you need to do. And then you just launch the uh, uh, start script to have Cura running. Um, so in this case, um, to save us some time, I've installed the Cura in there already. So all we need to do is just fire up Cura. So startup script is running in the background. Um, Cura should be up and running in a couple of seconds. How do the performances actually compare to uh, other JVMs? Do you have any available? Uh, comparisons and charts around that? Uh, good question. Um, we have not published anything officially um, on our website, but the performance-wise is very much comparable with the Oracle JRA, if you will. Okay. Uh, and in some cases, we we'll, might be even a little faster um, because um, you know we've been testing it quite a bit on the servers and desktop. And for x86, um, you know, we are leveraging uh, much of the optimization, if you will, uh, we've been um, applying over the years. So um, yeah, it, sh it should be very good for you to be able to use it as a uh, drop-in replacement for the OpenJDK. Of course, yeah, definitely fast in OpenJDK, so there's no doubt. Um, but uh, against the Oracle GRA, if you will. Cool. Perfect. So there you go. So we have Cura running. Um, 
so in this case, um, you could uh, run the run the bundles directly uh, on the Edison itself, or if you like to use um, Eclipse to deploy a bundle, um, you could do that with uh, if, as you were uh, doing with the Raspberry Pi, if you will. Um, in this case, we have the I uh, have the Eclipse running in the background, um, where you could actually connect remotely uh, to the board itself and be able to deploy a bundle and start it up and stop, uh, do, you know, un uninstall the bundle, do whatever you want to do with it. Um, so one thing that you guys want to be aware, if you want to connect the Eclipse directly to the Edison board, make sure that you do have the um, M Toolkit plugin installed. Um, I think that's the step, I think, that has been already laid out on the Cura uh, Getting Started Guide. Um, but it's one of those items that you have to have in order for you to be able to connect remotely. So this M Toolkit framework has to be there in order for you to remotely connect to the Edison board. Now, one other thing that you want to keep in mind uh, is for Eclipse to be able to talk to Edison board, uh, you have to have the uh, same uh, network subnet. Um, so in this case, I have Edison uh, configured to be on the same wireless network as my laptop so that you could actually uh, connect directly to the Edison. So here, as you can see, we're talking directly to Edison right now, um, where you could actually directly install the bundle um, from Eclipse. Um, in this case, let's see. I think I have uh, set up the sample um, OSGI, hello OSGI bundle. Um, that's the deployment. Um, trying to find where I put it. Okay. There you go. So I'm actually installing the bundle um, from Eclipse to um, Edison board. So it would take a couple of seconds to show up. Um, let's see if it's finished doing it. Not yet. But again, um, you could control it directly from the Eclipse itself or directly from the Edison board. Um, and if it has installed successfully, you will see the, um, the bundle showing up on this one of those drop down list on the Eclipse. And again, same thing on the uh, Edison board itself. Uh, you could see all the bundles that has been installed in here. Okay. Maybe it's taking a little more time. But in any case, that's how you would run the Cura um, on Ed Edison, uh, where you could actually deploy your bundles, start and stop whether you could do it remotely or directly from the console um, on Edison. OK, I want to exit out of here for a second. And then um, there we go. Back to the slide. OK, one other thing. Um, I don't know if you guys actually been um, using Apache Camel um, to use um, some of the endpoints, gateways, as a, uh, a communication um, devices that will route the messages. So if you happen to be interested in using um, Apache Camel, um, then you could also run uh, Apache Craft as another version of OSGI. Um, we also have installed it in here on Edison, where you could actually run that as well. So. Just to show you that the Julu, Julu embedded is comparable. So you could run Karaf in here. Oh, shoot. Hmm. I'm missing something. OK. Here, where did I go? There we go. Karaf. Okay, 
There we go. So you could run, obviously, not just Kira, but if you're into uh, running uh, Apache Camel, I believe Kira is going to be supporting or already supporting Camel too. But if you're interested in running Kira with Apache Camel, then you could run this OSGI to kick off the, uh, the services running on Intel Edison. OK. Uh, let me shut down. Yep, there we go. So this is a quick demo running on different OSGI on top of the Zool Embedded. Any questions from anybody at this point? I don't see any questions, uh, but yeah, pre pretty cool demo. Uh, uh, I know that, I mean, the, the setup you just showed is actually very, very simple and very straightforward, but uh, is there like a, a blog post or a, 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 um, a resource online for people who would like to uh, actually learn more on what it means to run Cura or Caraf on the uh, on, on Zulu? Like, do you have a forum? Do you have a blog or something? Actually, we're in the process of uh, creating the whole community around Zulu.org. So let me just slide back to. So it's it's coming. So um, we're all we're in the process of uh, developing a Zulu community called Zulu.org. Um, it's work in progress, and we would have all that information posted there. Um, so it's coming. So please stay tuned. Um, and meanwhile. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me directly. Uh, more than happy to share any of the details that we talked about today, as well as the uh, some of the things that we're working on. OK. OK, sounds so, good. So one other thing that I want to kind of share, um, a couple of tips around Intel Galileo. Um, Intel Galileo, again, um, is something that many folks have been playing around with it. and. It's mainly used for uh, Arduino for, for the most of the people out there. But you could actually run Java. Um, again, you, know, you just need to install the, the Linux, a uh, scaled down version of Linux, um, similar to Intel Edison. Um, this one supports the external SD cards. You could actually flash the, um, the Linux on that and then have it going. But, one thing that would save you a lot of time, personally, I ran into an issue at the beginning as well, is just not having the right cables there, believe it or not. Um, a few months back, Intel wasn't really clear on what type of cable you need to run um, Linux, if you will, to be able to connect and be able to drive the board uh, if you're not using Arduino. So the board doesn't come with this USB cable. Um, it's a 16 serial to USB. Uh, you see on the slide there, uh, that's something you have to get separately and making sure that's the right cable because otherwise you're going to run into uh, uh, trouble trying to get this board up and running and and getting it to work properly. So super important. Um, it's one of those things that doesn't come with the kit, so you just have to get it separately. But it's a must for you to be able to um, have that cable to be able to flash and connect through the terminal and do what you need to do to get the board set up and deploy Java in there. So in this case, again, um, details are found on the Intel website um, in terms of the older download images, uh, steps to get the boards all hooked up. Uh, once you have all that set up, again, it's very similar um, for you to be able to download the uh, Zulu from our Zulu uh, download page on azul.com. Um, and then simply FTP or secure copy the binary to uh, Galileo and connect through the terminal, same way as you would on the Intel Edison. And then off you go. So um, pretty much straightforward. 
very much similar to Intel Edison. Once you have Edison going, then it's basically the same for the Galileo. Um, and then you could run basically same um, Java and be able to test the applications. Now, I don't think the um, it's straightforward for you to be able to run Cura on Galileo because the the, the SD card would have to be reformatted. Um, the one you have installed by downloading the uh, image from Intel um, doesn't really give you enough uh, flexibility to add additional uh, stuff loaded in there. So you may need to do some uh, reformatting of the uh, image on the SD card to be able to get some additional space to install some other applications or runtime. But if you just want to run simple headless Java application, um, download Zool Embed it, set it up, off you go. OK, now one last thing, a tip for you guys, for those of you guys who are into Linux but really don't think that the Yocto Linux is good enough, because uh, Yocto Linux, they come with the Galileo and Edison is really a scaled down version of uh, Linux doesn't have all the tools and hooks for you to be able to uh, have a full control, if you will. Um, so there, there's a couple of uh, folks that have been using Debian uh, distro for Edison and Galileo, and that might be a better option for you if you're looking to have a better control and run full fuller version of Linux on either Edison or Galileo boards. Okay, so. The one other piece of information I'd like to share is uh, we are also going to be providing um, Windows IoT Core for uh, Intel Edison as well as uh, Intel-based uh, boards. So besides uh, being able to run Linux and run Zulu Embedded, uh, you can also run Windows IoT and also be able to run Zulu Embedded. So We'll have the binary for Windows IoT Core for Intel x86 shortly on our website as well. So again, just as a reminder, Zulu.org is coming. Um, it would have all the information about what we just talked about, as well as some additional helpful information on Zulu Embedded, as well as Zulu, and place where you could actually share some of the cool things you're developing, ask any questions, and it will be a lot of fun. So. Hopefully, you know, this will be a, one of the exciting things for Java community, uh, be able to leverage open source Java without having to worry about um, any of those licensing restrictions and go at it. OK, and here's some additional links. You have my contact information. Feel free to ping me directly with any questions. I'll be more than happy to talk to you guys. OK, thank you. Very cool. Yeah, I really like the conclusion. I mean, I've been, as many people know, I'm a huge believer in, in technologies like uh, Eclipse Cura for, for building IoT gateways, but it's always kind of a blurry line and um, weird discussions when it comes to, to the licensing of Java on, on an embedded gateway. And yeah, you guys are really providing a great uh, answer to that. So that's uh, yeah, that was definitely a... Uh, lots of uh, useful information today, actually. So again, if you have any questions, uh, people watching the webinar, just let us know using Twitter or uh, comment on the on the events page. I actually do have a couple of questions myself to get started. Um, I don't think you mentioned that. So a quick question about uh, so there was this great feature in the, in the Eclipse ID for doing a remote Cura uh, bundle deployment, and how about uh, Remote Java debugging, is that supported as well in, in, in Zulu? Remote debugging is currently not turned on, but we're looking to definitely have that turned on um, in the next upcoming updates, if you will. So um, there's a bunch of other cool things we were trying to support. Like, for example, we, I know the Cura allow you guys to use some of those, the device I.O., um, but we're also looking into enabling device I.O. directly from Zulu Embedded. So for those devices that's not able to afford additional uh, memory or footprint to have Cura installed on top, uh, we would provide that option to directly access device IOs from Zulu Embedded. So uh, that's also coming. OK, great. Well, well which I, I think uh, brings me to my next uh, questions, uh, uh, question. I was uh, wondering whether 
well, either in your roadmap or at the moment, you guys have any features uh, that would be available in Zulu and that are not necessarily part of OpenJDK, like uh, cool stuff that wouldn't be available in, in other uh, VMs? Um, yes, we're looking into a few areas that would uh, make it more compelling than what you guys have out there currently is the some of the technology we've been building in-house that includes low latency capabilities. Um, so unlike the OpenJDK or Hotspot, um, current garbage collector, one of the main challenges is to stop the wall of GC. Um, so those uh, device that require some uh, consistent response time without being worrying about the GC kicking in for meeting some of those uh, you know timing requirements, um, then low latency capability would be critical. So we're looking to add that capability down the road to our roadmap too. Okay, great. Okay, um, sounds good. Um, are there any other questions for Kevin? Um, Trying to figure out, so I don't see anything on Twitter. Um, not sure we have um, questions on Meetup as well. Well, that's too bad. But uh, I mean, the webinar is going to be uh, is recorded, right? As always, so I'm sure we will see people uh, commenting in the next couple days on on YouTube and on, and on Twitter. And I think we will be back on October the 14th, off the, off the top of my head. So that the, the announcement for the next Meetup isn't. Uh, uh, done uh, yet, but I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, next time it's going to be October the 14th. So uh, look forward to that. And Kevin, uh, thanks again for for your presentation. Uh, I do believe you will be sharing your slides, maybe on SlideShare or something, so as we can link to them from the from the events page. Will you? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Uh, well, take care, everyone, and we'll we'll talk next time. We'll talk next time. Bye bye. Okay. Great. Thank you. Bye bye, guys. Bye, Kevin.